come on to learn and grow Welcome to the Village Talk Show We discuss what people need to know Empower them to learn and grow We discuss what people need to know Empower them to learn and grow Give praises to Jehovah From whom all blessings, blessing and knowledge will flow Blessing and knowledge will flow The Village Talk Show Dedicating to empowering the community to live a healthy, safe, and financially capable life. Helping each one of us in realizing our dream at any age, any point, starting from today, day, day, success. Andre, you having some level going on? All right. Hello, people. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Village Talk Show. I am your host, Roger Daly. Be with you this Thursday. Um, everybody's doing it from, and no one is in the studio today, so you're gonna have to see with us everything that's happening around us because we have so many things that's going on. You guys and relays weekend and all that good stuff. Um, come here, you want to do the introduction? You want to get the door first, all right? And then you're gonna come do the introduction for me. Hey, John, say what's up until my son. Gets hey, what's up? What's up? What's up, villagers? Coming to you from the car today, just moving around the city, just doing our thing, seeing what's going on out here, villagers in our community. Just want to say hello. All right, come, Cooper. Come do the opening for Natty. Come, ready? Ready? Come, ready? So you, today's your day to do the opening. All right, ready? Three, two, three, two, three, two, three. Dedicated. Dedicated. Uh -huh. Two. Two. Empowering. Empowering. The college. T. T. Mm -hmm. To live. A healthy self, safe, ethically, financially, financially, life skill. Hey, through what? Hey, through. It's still through. Sad. Education. Education helping with what of us is realizing, realizing our dream at any age at any point starting from today starting successfully success. Success. success Spoon. Spoken. Spoken. All right. Awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. All right. Uh, that, that's my that's my young man catching on, you know, getting him involved in the show. So uh, he sound better than you, Roderick. Let's bring him on. You know what I'm saying? Ladies and gentlemen, you know you could join us anywhere. Get us on YouTube. We want you to join us, right? The Village Radio Show Third. Um, the Village Radio Talk Show. If you have questions, comment, please email us at, at villageshow30 at gmail.com. And we're getting a lot of your emails, a lot of your comments, so we are responding to them. So we're very excited about that. Um, they, you know, on YouTube, on Facebook, you can show John L. Sampson, Roger McDaly, Andre Doman, Sophia Willisie, um, then Miss Joanne Bryant. Now out there on the radio at 92.1 GD radio. All right. So please do enjoy the show. We're lot on the show today. Um, like I said, we're all everybody be from home, so we're all gonna be a little bit busy. You know, it's gonna be a little distracted, so we hopefully it's not too much. Yeah, John. 
a lot of things happening out there in the world today. One, um, how what's going on with the Nets, man? How 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 they get blown out after we play in game, right? They, they get blown literally by 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 Boston for love. What's going on with the Brooklyn Nets, man? You think all that craziness that happened all throughout the year was a factor? Yeah, it, it was. Kyrie not playing uh, due to his um, basically his. Uh, Belief is principles with respect to the vaccine, trading James Harden for Ben Simmons, who doesn't play a damn minute. You know, I mean, it was just a di- very disappointing season. They had so they had such high hopes at the beginning of the season, and just to be swept like that—that's just the exclamation point to what was going on uh, during uh, the season for. Um, I, I, I think James Harden was upset, right? James Harden was very angry that Kyrie Irving jeopardized the team for what he viewed. Um, I, I, you know, he didn't put the team first, he, you know, and, and and a lot of people were upset when 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 Eric Adams decided that you know he's gonna allow Kyrie Irving to come back and to come back. And gave the special privileges to come back and play. I know. Uh, I think, you know, I, I think the mayor was correct with respect to that decision because it was an unfair, unfair advantage when you had other teams who those individuals weren't vaccinated and they were allowed to play. You know, so I, I think, and overall, the other individuals who chose not to get vaccinated, they knew. Uh, this was the decision a long time ago during the de Blasio administration, and Mr. Adams is just adhering to it. You know, those people who did, who who have certain principal positions, they went and they took the vaccine. But now you see a lot of these teachers went and got these phony vaccination cards. Yeah, and 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 they're fighting for their jobs because they lied, and now they're gonna they want to. I don't know. <clears throat> no, I, I I just feel like it's it's you know things need to be. Things need to be further looked into. Um, into those things, and how many people actually have gotten those only vaccines? You know, sanitation workers. Now you have the issue with, with the teachers. Um, you know, to me, it's like a whole bunch of rah 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 rah. You know, and Correct. that needs to be fixed. Right. So it was, it was just di- disappointing with this season, but we got the Mets, baby. The Mets. What about the Mets? Hey, they're winning, baby. First place, fourteen and five. But uh, listen, the Yankees are thirteen and six, and so they're first place too. All right. So they said this is the first time in seven years that this late in the season, right? This late in the season that um, this late in the season that both teams are in first place. The Yankees. But it's Yankees. not how you start, it's how you finish. That's true. The Yankees uh won today and the Mets lost. So I guess the Mets didn't play today. I was a repeat. I thought they played today. No, they lost 10 5 yesterday. Oh, okay. So I must have been the same game then I, I was seeing highlight of today. But the Yankees definitely won. Um the Yankees definitely won today because I saw some of that. As a matter of fact, it's playing back up on the S break. Yeah, where you going? Hey, what's going on with the market, my friend? What's going on with the market? Elon Musk buying Twitter, forty-four billion dollars. Yeah, I just noticed something today. Talking about forty-four billion dollars. You know how much that guy's worth, dog? A quarter of a trillion. Yeah, two hundred two million dollars. Two hundred and two oh, billion dollars. Billion, I mean billion. Don't don't let me insult him. LeBron James is worth eight hundred million. Eight hundred million. Huh? LeBron James is worth how much? Eight hundred fifty. Hey man, he knows how to market himself. And Michael Jordan is worth one point six. I thought Michael Jordan was two point something. Nah, he's at one point six. I I just looked at it today. I mean, that's what I saw today. I was looking at. I'm just man. I'm just hey Jack, how you doing? Um, Jack is saying what's up. Jack Glasser is saying what's up, John. Hey, hey, Mr. Glasser, how are you, sir? He looks like he's happy to see you, man. Jack is, man. Jack is a very good, 
very good attorney over there in Queens. And, you know, he's been a, a mentor to me. You know, he's taught me a lot, you know, when I was practicing. So I just want to say hello to Jack and his, him and his family. Awesome. Awesome. You know, I, I think we need like a network of lawyers. A few people have called me about lawyers recently. And, uh, I think we need to get done with the lawyers. Um, yo, my son hit a home run on Sunday, dog. Congrats, man. I mean, it wasn't like a running home run. It was like a, it was like a judgy and home run that he hit. Really? Mm-hmm. I, 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 I went upstairs. This, this is the third time he hit it out of the park. Who does he play for? The Bonnies, of course. Yeah, yeah he plays for the Bonnies, nine-year-old. You know, some days I feel like I need. A to friend of my, uh, my, my, my friend's uh, son plays for. His name is Chase. He plays with the twelve and thirteen-year-old. Yeah, yeah. No, Chase. Chase. Uh, yeah, he plays. Like, he's younger. He's like uh, that's Dave Ellison, right? Yep. Yeah, he's he plays he plays uh, eight U. He played with Grayson for a little bit last year too. Yeah. Yep. Well, you were saying something about the stock market. What's going on that? Well, I mean, stock market. We, this was one of the worst months uh, since the recovery, man. With with respect to the stock market, it took some serious hits. Yeah, I, 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 I some some stock. Well, I know that over. You know, one, I didn't even look at it, but so maybe Andre can look it up for me. Look up the airline stocks: Delta, JetBlue, um, Delta, JetBlue, American Airlines, because they were going back up. Right, they were they were going back up. Right, and and that was a couple of years ago. I was like, people need to invest in the stock market in the airline because they're they're bouncing back and they're bouncing back now. So even even the cruise lines um, bouncing back too. Yep. So people need to look at where they invested money and see what is going on um, with that. People are talking about the investment. You know, one thing though that people don't are, are failing. Right. One thing that um, right. Um, one thing that 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 I was talking about with somebody is the effect of life insurance. Right. So a lot of people, um, um, a lot of people don't know how important it is to have life insurance. And that, well, it is very important. You know, we always talk about. Um, wealth and people need to look at that um, and don't panic buy. Yeah, that's true. Don't panic sell. You didn't mean don't panic buy. Not panic. Don't panic sell. Buy. Don't panic sell. We're doing that. Um, what else is going on? So yeah, um, the UN the UN general, right? Andre, what's going on, our producer? Right. Sophia, what's going on? You sound Sophia, like robots. Sophia's not here today. Our um, the UN secretary will be visiting. Uh, Valensky um, over the next couple um, over the next couple of of of, of, of day uh, tomorrow. You know, you know what, you know what's scary about some of those things, John. I'm always concerned when the TV is making an announcement that the UN Secretary is going to Serbia. I mean, not Serbia, to um, Ukraine. Right to me. That's like, that's like putting your business out there. You get what I'm saying or no? What do you think? Did I lose John? Yeah, I lost John. Yeah, so, so the UN sector will be visiting, um, visiting Russia, I mean, Ukraine tomorrow to have a meeting with Valensky to see, you know, what's going on with this, with this war. And, you know, we have all come to the agreement that this war is, it, it's, it's just ridiculous. And I, I, I'm, I'm really hoping that they charge uh, Vladimir Putin with, um, what do you call that? With war, war crimes? Yeah, I really hope they do. Yeah, he can charge him with the war crimes. What's, go, what's, what, what's that going to do to him? Not well, a damn thing. Well, that's not that's not that means like he might have issues with leaving his country though. Because if he, if if he's a prisoner of war, he can't leave this country. So how well can he rule? He can go to Switzerland. And do what? 
So he could he could travel back and forth between Russia and Switzerland. Yeah. Hey. And any other any other country Where that would country? allow him, like Grand Cayman Islands, Cuba, Cuba, Venezuela. Really though, Vene Venezuela, Guyana. Now Guyana, you, you know, Guyana has extradition. You can be extradited out of Guyana. In Jamaica, hey, you saw that big deal. They, uh, you saw that big deal with Exxon with the government. No, nah, I didn't see it. What in happened? Guyana, two, three hundred million dollars. The, the government, the the gov, um, the government, government is, will be receiving from Exxon. It just, it's probably just like the Chinese taking over Jamaica. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, uh, you know, it's because they want they, 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 they've been wanting to do that for a number of years now. To right you know, to to get inside of um to get inside of of of, of Guyana and South America and Guyana is kind of like the, right. the 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 bridge to South America. So they've been trying to do that for a long time. So they finally got through this. Right, and he's sticking out um, Jamaica. I just got a call today that said Andrew Holness will be in New York this weekend. Um, right will be in New York this weekend. Uh, the Prime Minister of Jamaica. Okay. So right. you're going to visit with him? No, no, no. I don't. I don't. We're, we're not friends like that. I don't. You know, I met him a couple of times uh, a few years ago, but no, we're not. <laughs> anyway, you know, this weekend is. You know what's also interesting? Is a what also happened this? What happened this week is the congressional and the Senate state Senate lines were voided in a four-three decision by the Court of Appeals. Yes, I was. I I got a phone call today about that. I did. I got it. I you know it. what that means? There's a possibility that the Jan the June primary will be pushed back to August, and the lines will be drawn by a special master. And if that's the case, we don't know if the Senate Democrats will either keep their supermajority, let or less they have a majority. Supermajority majority now. They have a majority. What's what's the number? They have a super majority, my friend. No, they, they do. Yes, they do. But after their arrogance. No, wait, wait. wait. They don't have a super majority. They have a super majority. It, what is it? Six to three members. What they have? Right. One? They have 40, close to 40, 41, something like members. Right. So, so they have a super majority. They, ladies and gentlemen, what that basically means is that they can do two thirds. They don't need to do they don't need exactly. to pass any They can override the governor's veto anytime. Yep. Which is good and bad. Yeah, it is good and bad, but it just shows you that the Republicans for years drew lines. For decades, they drew their lines. And of course, they did get some court scrutiny, but not to the extent where the lines were completely voided. This was a total power grab by the Senate Democrats. And as a result, you know, this is what happens when you're greedy. When you're greedy, you try to get everything, but eventually you'll get nothing. And this is what happens. Who knows how the special master will draw those lines? Uh, uh, um, it, it's, 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 it's a very interesting conversation, right? Very, very, very interesting conversation because it just shows you the arrogance of the Senate Democrats. To create such a super partisan districts, especially for Congress, when Tom Swazi, who represents Nassau County, they bend them all the way down to the Bronx up into Westchester. That makes that's that makes no sense. Tom Swazi, but Tom Swazi is done. No, I know that, but whoever's running for a seat, it just shows you the 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 excessiveness or the out, how outrageous, outlandish this was on their behalf. Let me this was you. a total miscalculation by leadership in the Senate Dems. Total miscalculation. And it's going to backfire somewhat. Let me, you know, um, Tom, I would love to get Tom Swazi on. I think we need to find us some connect to get him on the, the show. I think I will. I'll work on that. Yeah. We'll yeah put that together. Yes. Before the pro I, I, I like some of the things he's saying, actually. I, I agree with some of the things he's saying also, I, you know, I, I'm agreeing. and I, I tell everyone, you know, everybody says, well, you know, Kathy Hochul, the governor, and 
you know, my thing is this. Kathy, excuse me, Governor Hochul needs to be able to increase her numbers. You know, and you figure out how can she increase her numbers in order to win because we're concentrating so much on the primary. You got to get to the primary to get to the general election. But we need the best candidate who can beat the Republican Lee Zeldin if he wins the Republican primary. Because Lee Zeldin has always beat in incumbents. Always beat incumbents. He yeah. has a he hold on one second, villagers. The cops are behind me trying to get through. Uh, and what did, what, what did you do now, John? Try to cast you behind you. Uh, they ain't doing nothing. Stay away from them. <laughs> well, what, 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 you know, in villages, what I'm just saying is this. The Democrats have a supermajority, and because of their arrogance, they made super partisan lines, and as a result, everything gets thrown out, and everything is in a flux. Instead of the primary being in June, there's a strong possibility that the primary will be in August, along with the congressional lines. And second of all, the petitioning process has to start all over again. Why, now why we have to spend why, more money. Why would it need to start over? Because you don't know where you, your lines are going to be. And the kicker is there's going to be a special master appointed who creates those lines. Possibility. So when you try to be greedy, what happens to a glutton? Right. You you you, you start actually. You, exactly. The opposite happens. Right. So, you know, uh, I mean, it's, it's just you're greedy, you're greedy for something, you lose everything. Exactly. Uh, so that, that's that, that's actually that's actually very interesting. Something for us to look forward to. But there are a number of special elections that are coming up. And that might not be a, an issue now. Tom Swazi's tweet that's going to be up because he's not running. Um, and Congress. it's going to be a waste. I'm running a Goover, I'm running a, a May, uh, a governor's race and assembly's race in June. And two months later, I'm back at it again, running a congressional race and a state senate race. Yep. And this is the issue, Roger, I talked about in the 58th assembly district. The issue is, is that. You're calling a special election at the end of May when three weeks or possibly 28 days later, you have a primary election. You know, once again, this is a power grab by the, 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 the elected officials. And it, it, it just reeks. Yeah, 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 just you know, reeks. What, one of the issues, I, I, I'm not... I'm upset about the monies that's been spent, right? Because I think it's an election costs a lot of money because you have you have all of these things in play that affects an election like early voting, right? Right. Um, you have the petitioning piece. You have a lot of things that go on and double petitioning, right? Right. Um, again, because if you're on one, you gotta you gotta get get the, the numbers for the second, right? So you right. to get go through that process. My, right. My problem is a few years ago, maybe five or six years ago, there was a, a, a force in the Senate, right, that they need to call, tell the governor, um, I think Cuomo was to tell him that he had to make these special elections earlier, right, and make sure that it's effective, right? Now, right. now, in this particular case, it's going to backfire because the the election, right? The election is literally, like you said, less than a month before the primary, and then you you're gonna run again in the primary, win the primary, and run for the general in November, right? Because before you had May and then you would have September primaries and then you run in November. Now you don't have that anymore because now it was too late. And now it's my part. So at, at the end of the day, a couple of ways to look at it is like, no matter how you look at this election thing, 
is ineffective, right? Because I think there need to be exceptions in the law. Like, right. like this shouldn't be happening, right? Because again, like you said, it's very costly to New Yorkers. But one of the things that exactly we extremely costly, man. Right? Extremely costly. One of the things that we discussed last time, though, was that the state is. What are they going to do with that two million dollars? They're really not going to put the money to put them back into the community. They're going to use that money for something else. Correct. You know, and and so and then that's like on some of you, like on maybe training in the community and, and things like that, that would basically affect what it is that we're doing uh, community-wise across the state. Right. right. So either way, damn if you do, damn if you don't. So it, uh, to be honest with you, if I'm the one that's on the ballot, I got to I gotta admit it. I, I, I love my, I love where I'm sitting I'm just on that ballot. Because we already know you, your person in politics know that you go to a special election, you are the incumbent. So it, it, it means that you're going to get more money in your till. It yes. means that it means that you are going to get a more in, a, a, a higher number of endorsement. It means that you're it, it's part of or in the general you're going to get beat. Right. right. Be, so if I'm the person who is the chosen in that election, then you know what? Um, then I'm happy for that. Um, right, 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 right. U.S. Senate and seven races in June and state and, and U.S. Senate House. What do you mean by that, Herman? So, race, U.S. Senate, and assembly. put that back up, Andre. Um, an assembly. Oh, you mean the New York State Senate or oh, the U.S. Senate races in June? The state senate and U.S. representative in August. If when you look at the new party line, I guess is what he's talking about. If, if, exactly. If, if, which is a lot, right? Um, I, I got you. Um, so go ahead, Andre. Bring us on to the commercial. Um, just remind you that the 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 Village Radio Talk Show is brought to you by the Single Parent University. Where where you do where they're doing open admissions, where you can have court, where you have personal uh, development as a single parent, um, mindful parenting, support uh, seminars. You have financial management, you you know nutrition and wellness, right? And they provide free uh, transportation, social uh, support hub, resume and cover letter career development, legal assistant. If you want to be part of this, please do reach out to 646-779-6767 or SPU or text SPU to 71441. Again, that's 71441, the single parent, right? So yeah, yeah, you 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 you're right in terms of the economic downfall. Hey, Doctor Brian, Doctor Brian, Doctor Brian, the late bird, the late bird. Why you still? Why you still? Little Juju, little Juju. Why are you late, little Juju? What is going well, you on? You know what? My my child got us up to into some of you. He congrats, congrats. So hey, all Doc. the paperwork, yeah. <laughs> hey Doc, can you, can you lend me a twenty? Can you oh. let me hold a twenty? Oh boy, oh boy. So um, I had to submit all the paperwork. So I apologize, listeners. Um, they give us a deadline for parents to do because there's no way the kids can get all that done within a short period of time. I I I I I need I John needs twenty. I need, I need like a let us hold some Doc. Tell them let us hold something. Listen. Not a problem. You know, little Juju, little Juju is from the Caribbean. Little Juju is from the Caribbean, right, John? So you know what? That's you know right, what? little Juju. Caribbean. Oh, Caribbean. My man, Isaac. We need some dough. Tell right. him we need some. We need some currency. Yeah, John. You know that boy ain't gonna have no money. Mm. You know why he ain't gonna have no money? Why not? Um, because he's from a Caribbean household. You know those Caribbean parents. 
you make any money, you got to start paying bills. That's <laughs> not true. That's not true. No, 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 no,
the wholeness of the child. That's what I'm going to say. The holistic approach to a child's um, interest. And whoever is for that, then I'm going to back them up. But if you're just trying to feed them for a paycheck or, you know, just making crazy pages without being in the classroom and seeing what's going on, then it just doesn't work. I, 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 but my wife went to Penn Relay, so now I have to do both homework before the kids go to bed and making sure that everything is good. So, you know, this morning I went upstairs to go watch uh, watch movie and so I have to look at some. So, Abigail, I was, I was, you know, it, you, you are um, an inspiration, right? Um, you wrote a book. Um, do you have a copy of the book to show our audience? Hold it right up so we can see it. All right. Andre, can we highlight her on the camera so everybody can see that? I, I, I can't just not like you. Before we even talk about the book itself, right? Let's talk about the inspiration for the book. Sure. So I come from a huge family. There's 11 of us. Damn, that's a huge family. I have five brothers and five sisters, and we have the same mother and father. They're still married, so. God yeah. bless. Big up, big up, big up, mom and dad. <laughs> big up to St. Lucian. Yes, we're like a whole football team. Um, so my dad is visually impaired. So are all my five brothers and my oldest and youngest sister. So growing up with, you know, that dynamic, I was always, you know, privy to see both sides of, um, just how life is for somebody who is visually impaired and for myself who was fortunate to you know be able to see hey, hold, on, hold on go back your dad is visually impaired but you have 11 kids oh. yeah hello what does one have to do with them Tony <laughs> 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 Roderick will bring that up Tony Lord we're very proud of you Mr. <sighs> and it kept us, you know, part of it just keeping you guys in check. And, it, you know, because sometimes people, you know, they, they take, they take advantage. Children want to take advantage of certain situations. Don't get me wrong. Were, no, all of you born, were all of you born in St. Lucia or were you born here? We were all born in St. Lucia. My dad, he's an educator. He actually founded the first school for the blind in St. Lucia. And he was the principal. He's traveled the world. He's so... He's an avid reader. He's the most intelligent person I have ever met. And um, so my first, my first three siblings, they're all visually impaired. My two oldest brothers and my sister. And, you know, my, they, it was time for them to go to school. And there was no school for the blind in St. Lucia. So they had to go all the way to Trinidad and Tobago to the school for the blind. Imagine my five-year-old sister having to leave her mom, who she was so close with. It was very traumatizing for her. And, you know, my dad just saw that as, listen, my kids are from St. Lucia, they're St. Lucian. We should have these resources in our country for my children. And he advocated for them and successfully opened up the first school for the blind. And, you know, time went on. And, you know, again, it's just a physical impairment. It does not, you know, have anything to do with their cognitive um, abilities. And they're very smart, very intelligent. So my mom and dad decided they wanted to integrate them into the public school system, and that's what they did. And that now children who are visually impaired actually go to regular schools in St. Lucia. So kudos to my father for doing that. What's the name of the school? Huh? What's the name of the school? The school is the School for the Blind. It's that's just the name of it in St. Lucia. But now that more children are being pushed into mainstream um, education. There really aren't, there's really not that many children. I don't think there's any children enrolled anymore because of that whole new wave of get them into the public schools that my dad had um, started. So he's a trailblazer. Okay, uh, awesome, that's, that's, that's great news. And so that kind of helped you with your character, Sadie, right? Um, in, Definitely. In, 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 in the book. Mm -hmm. um, So the inspiration came from home, but then you took different angles because you didn't just talk about somebody who was uh, visually impaired, but you right. also spoke about people with other um, other characteristics that uh, that 
are not just visually impaired, but mm -hmm. talk about physical as well as um, oratory. Yes. Definitely. I mean, for me, as an educator, I have my master's in early childhood special education, and all the students I come across in all different settings are children with cognitive disabilities, right? autism. And there's a lot of buzz around that. But what we don't see is children with physical disabilities being highlighted. And I thought that I would shed light on that because that's just, I feel like they're the invisible mm -hmm. set of children. Um, Rudy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've been in so many different school settings in New York City, and the closest I've ever gotten to see a child with a physical disability in a public school was actually at a charter school where they actually did accommodations for the child's um, interim assessment where they like um, made the print bigger, and that was like the closest thing I've seen. So I'm just wondering, like, where are the children with physical disabilities? Are they in the public school system? They are in the public school system. You have different programs for that. You can have um, any types of settings. There's District 75 that caters to kids with special needs, um, and they treat them um, so well. In regards to some of the activities that they have set up for them, making sure that um, the temperature is right, that any manipulative that they need is available to them. And not only District 75, but there's plenty of public schools that actually offer a great special needs program. Um, it could be from Ness. It could be from, um, I'm trying to think of the younger ones, not the Ness, another younger one um, from early age. And just finding nurturing and caring environment for them, making sure that, hey, those who react to certain sounds, um, it's not as noisy. And students who need anything, you know, visually impaired students, you'll have them in the public school setting as well. You'll have support for them. So it depends on what school you attend or what school you visit um, and the vision behind it. The, yeah. you, you, you do have some schools like um, uh, on Eastern Parkway uh, between, what's that, Classen and mm -hmm. Franklin. There's a specific cool school that's designed for uh, mm -hmm. students who are um, hearing impaired and, and visually impaired, I believe. I think both. Mm -hmm. uh, but like Dr. Bryan stated, you have that. But you're right. There, there are... Um, there are a number of students who don't get the services. Like when I when I taught, and a lot of times students are ashamed, right? So you, you have that issue as well where students are ashamed and they don't want to talk about the, the inability to hear. Like a person in a wheelchair, you can see it, right? You can see that, that behavior, right? But somebody who is visually impaired or hearing impaired, right? Um, they sometimes are ashamed because they, you know, they think that something is wrong with them, right? From that component, and that's why when I walked into the classroom and as as a as as an administrator, I was told the teachers um, that they need to have the light on, right? And teacher, oh, why? It's it's, it's too bright because you have students in the classroom who cannot see, but they don't want to tell you that they cannot see, right? So we, we try to do that um, that component for all those students. But I'm so glad that in your book, you're highlighting that people, young people especially, with, with, with these disabilities, they are doing just fine. Yes, I'm talking St. Francis. Yes, St. Francis of Assisi. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad about that. So tell us now, tell us a little bit about the book. Well, yeah, the book, it's pretty much, like you said, highlighting three uh, physical disabilities. There's a little girl, Sadie, she's visually impaired. And she's actually my, well, they're all related to me. Like these are my nieces and my nephew in real life. I mean, they don't really depict the disability, but it's just to like, you know, I use them to show that you know, we do things differently, right? And for me, again, being around children, we know that it's hard for them to 
have that vocabulary and they have no filters and they might say things that might be a little harsh or offensive to somebody innocently, right? So for me, I felt like I needed to really put in language that would show them just because somebody looks different from you and they do things differently doesn't mean that they're they're you know not capable of doing it. So showing that Sadie, she's blind, but she can still read. She might not be able to use her eyes, but she uses she uses she uses her fingers. She touches the the bumps on the on the paper, and she's reading Braille, and she can still use her imagination. So just again having that book as a conversation starter, so that kids could understand. Hey, when I see somebody who's who has a physical disability, I know how to approach them. I know how to treat them with kindness, with love, with empathy, right? So I feel like that was really important for me because, again, I really, my nieces and my nephew, they are in the public school system. And, again, if they're the only child in that classroom with that disability and there's 30-something other kids who are not sensitive, again, not on purpose, but because they just don't have that understanding, you know, I really want to highlight them and, let the other children who are not who are not impaired have that language and have that sensitivity around um, when they have interactions with these children. You, um, I, you, you had one child that uh, in the wheelchair but still play basketball, right? And he, he liked to do different sports. I don't remember if he played basketball, but he liked to do different. Sports. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and the mo the mobility. Mm -hmm. What, what I enjoyed about the book, and, and as a matter of fact, I, I, I had my son read it. Yeah. She goes, Daddy, who's Rudy? <laughs> 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 right. But, um, you know, I, I, I think a lot of District 75 schools need to have a book like this in their system for young people, right? Because you are letting them know that though you might struggle, right? Because struggle is real. Mm -hmm. Though you might struggle, you can come out on top. And you are, you are special, right? You are special, but an, indeed you can, mm -hmm. right? It, it, in spite of your disability, your, your disability doesn't define you. You define yourself. Yes, absolutely. I agree. So the book is twofold. It's for children with physical disabilities to see themselves in print because that's something that's so rare. And I did have them as African American children because that's two, you know, communities that are disproportionate and you know they marginalized a black child with a physical disability. So I think that was very important for me to highlight. So when they see themselves in print, you know, it empowers them. And also for the children who are not physically disabled, how do they interact with children with physical disabilities? So it is twofold in bringing like that holistic approach to that issue, this issue. There's a, there's a, a, a our public advocate, mm -hmm. right, Jamani Williams. Yes, is an example, uh, being one of the. I think he's one of five elected citywide or citywide um, person of color and the first one with a known major disability by having Tourette's. Yeah. So your book is highlighting other people who are like you. And he's also highlighting that though I have this mm -hmm. um, issue, I can still do things. I'm sorry, Dr. Brand was about to ask something. I'm sorry. When you, no, no, no. Thank you for um, bringing that up. When you mentioned basketball, I think it was on the news not too long ago, a young lady who was visually impaired mm -hmm. and they made a whole big thing because she was in high school, you know, a little older, but how she was able to shoot every ball in wow. by the sound. So mm -hmm. the um, staff knew exactly how to help her mm -hmm aim and target because she enjoyed playing the sport. So it's definitely something that's necessary so that kids will feel as though, hey, you know what? I can't, I don't have to be left out of sports or playing sports mm -hmm. or doing anything. So thank you for including that in there so that they know that they can succeed. And she made the winning shot. So that is definitely um, something to celebrate. Definitely. Yeah, you know, uh, um, uh, a question 
how are you doing in terms of getting the book out there, especially into schools? So I am so fortunate that um, Senator Parker, I reached out to him and he connected me with um, Tara at his office. So we're in the process of, you know, me just um, creating my whole introductory page with all my information and then just doing a blast to all the principals at the schools. And I know she's going on break. So when she comes back, you know, we're going to, she's going to loop in with me and we're going to see how we could, you know, really get into the schools with me doing read alouds and having those discussions with the children and um, hopefully just having those books as educational resources in the school. So that's like where I'm starting. And then, you know what, I'm going to invite you to come and um, visit my school and come in person as an author and meet our students. Thank you, Dr. Bryant. I really appreciate that. I will take it. It's funny because I was going to say I have a career day next week, Wednesday, May 11th. So I'm going to invite you to that too at uh, another high school so you get to read uh, yeah, elementary and high school. Yeah, I don't have a school to invite you to, but uh, I'll figure it out. Uh -uh. Don't worry, John. But what you can do from the, you know, make sure though before the the um, the one of the things in order for you know you need to get your vendor license, right? Mm -hmm. And the other thing to make sure that you have a curriculum behind the book, a series of workbooks, work work things that people to work through. Um, for students, especially for the for people who live in with uh, disabilities, and how to navigate the system. I think, you know, because you, you do touch on an important topic. You have the Special Olympics. You have people with, uh, who are reaching very very, and it's not just it's not just just those three disabilities, right? Exactly. You, you you have obesity, which can lead to disability. You have you have um, you know, physical health and mental health that people have to live with that can lead to a different disabilities that are that are out there. So, you know, you highlighting those and don't forget to reach out. I'm going to make sure that I get you to um, Lenique, who is part of that conversation um, with the school. So you're able to do a couple of career days and highlight your 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 work, um, your work as well, because I think that is that is just a phenomenal piece, especially for young people who are struggling with self-esteem. Wow, thank you guys so, so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I, like, I like the fact that at the back of your book, you, at the back of your book, you, you had the alphabet back there. What's up with that? Oh yeah, I had to have resource pages. I'm an educator, you know, we have the Braille alphabet and the ASL alphabet. Yes. My dad is probably like, girl, mm -mm. Because, you know, it's not authentic. There's no bumps. But in my next oh, one, okay, okay. I was trying to figure it out, and we couldn't do it in time. But definitely, in the next round of printing, it will have that authentic feel for the yeah. real alphabet. Yeah. But yeah definitely. Okay, okay. Look at you. You go, girl. That is excellent. Um, how, could people get, how could people get a copy of this book? Oh, yeah. So you could definitely go to www.sandcastlebook.com and you can purchase it there. Sandcastlebook.com. Yes. Okay. And if they want to reach out to you, where would they go? Find me um, on Facebook, Abigail Edmonds. It's a public page. You can always just send me a Facebook message. Totally fine. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know where to reach her. Facebook, yeah. Abigail Edmonds. I'll be calling you to reach, to connect you to a couple of educators and um, administrators to do read alouds, meet some of the kids, physically come in. Yes, yes, I would love that. I would love that. Yeah, we're open now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? No more remote learning. If you're vaccinated, you are welcome to come. So I am, I am. <laughs> we'll set that up very very soon for the next couple of weeks thank you Dr. Bunny. I really appreciate it so ladies and gentlemen come and support our friend here to the show Miss Abigail Edmonds um, and teach children about differences and appreciating the uniqueness of each and every single one of us so thank you for joining us 
Thank you for um, sharing your family uh, with us because that's them that live through your book and also your experience every day, bringing love and sunshine to everyone. Thank you. Keep smiling, beautiful. Keep smiling. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I, I, and make sure that, I, I don't know if you're married yet, but make sure it's either Jamaican or Guyanese, all right? Ignore. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You know, my sister, don't worry, my sister-in-law is, uh, my sister-in-law, who's actually in the school system as well, um, is also from St. Lucia. She, and that's one of the, that's one of the countries that's on my bucket list, actually. Oh, uh, you should go. You should definitely go. I should be going, I think, I have to follow up with my cousin, mm -hmm. right? But I think she wants to do her 50th in St. Lucia. So I might actually get a chance to go in, in, at the end of October. I heard it's a beautiful island. It really is. The Helen of the West, yeah. The most beautiful island in the world. Yeah. It is beautiful, beautiful island. The water is magnificent. Listen, we're, we're, we're going to fight because <laughs> when I travel and I ask people about different islands, I don't hear St. Lucia coming up. I do. Yeah. I have. Mm -hmm. I have several mm -hmm. times. Several times. Well, Lucia is one of the times. I, I have heard about the beaches. Yes. yes. The the best 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 in the the world. Where have you been? Under a rock room? I know. No. Let, let me say it one more time. Beaches, when I yes. travel the world, when I travel the world and I ask about islands, all they talk about is Bob Marley coming in from the coast. Please. Jamaica? Who wants to go to Jamaica for vacation? No. Not I. No. Huh? I don't want to go there for vacation. Where? Jamaica. Oh, please. <laughs> you just you need to go to Guyana for vacation. Guyana? You mean like South America? Yes. Wow. Well, she's just like, ah, I like that. She just tied I'm a proud solution. I'm sorry. I can't help it. Like, it's the best island in the world. Wait, let me ask you a question. Wait, wait. Actually, do you, um, I, I, in a serious question, politics in St. Lucia is very strong. I like, I, I think like almost everybody in St. Lucia <laughs> is involved in politics. Now, when I say involved, they like, they follow it to no end. Or is it, is it, is that actually true? It's easy because there's only two parties. There's not like, you know, it's literally two parties. You either SLP or UWP. There's nothing in between. So Keith yeah. Mitchell is what? Hmm? Keith Mitchell. Is that his name? What's the prime minister's name? Oh, um, Frederick something. Was it was it Mitchell? Jepier, Jepier, Jepier. What was 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 Mitchell ever a prime minister there? Somebody Mitchell? No. Uh, we okay. had this guy, John Compton, for a million years. Right. No, one of my friends is she's uh she's here, but she's like she, she's part of the Bosques. I think they were all part of the politics in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. She's part mm -hmm. of that. Um, I'm I was just is it random? I figure I have you here. I, I'll ask a question. The politics is very deep. It right? is, it is. Oh, and that's a conversation. He will not stop. He will continue and continue. Thank you, Dr. Brown. No, I'm not, I'm not continuing that. We'll end with that. Thank you for saving me, girl. Yes. No, I'm not, no, no, no. Ladies and gentlemen. You have my number. Call me, okay? Yes, exactly. <laughs> you can reach Miss Abigail and Miss. That's my number. Okay. Okay. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank right. you, Abigail. Thank you. John, well, nice meeting you. Thank you, Dr. Brian. Bye. We'll be in touch. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, you know, um, John and Joanne, the, the book that she writes, and to have that, you, there are a lot of there are a lot of students, a lot of children with with disabilities, Absolutely. um, who who are ashamed. And I'm glad that she made it from a point where people can be proud. You know, Joanne. I mean, as Simone is off the Bible study, so she's saying bye. So bye. yeah, Joanne. Um, Sure, we'll repost it again. Right. Absolutely, we'll repost um, Abigail's information. So if you miss her information earlier, it will be reposted. Thank you so much, Mr. Andre Sandcastlebooks.com, Abigail Edmonds. On Facebook, um, yeah, uh, you know, there's something I I I I remissed if I don't do this because I'm going to forget. Um, 
I, I spoke last week about one of my domino players who was in um, ICU. And unfortunately, this week, uh, Tuesday, um, he transitioned. So I just want to make sure that to Winston Rule and his family, well, he's gone, so may his soul rest in peace, but to his family, um, you know, you just want to make sure that they know that they're in my prayers. Um, I know that losing someone who's vital, a, a breadwinner, a, a, a person who holds a family together is very hard to 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 lose that person. Um, I was fortunate enough to visit him actually minutes before he transitioned because I went to go see him about uh, one o'clock on Tuesday, and then he transitioned at one twenty-five. Um, uh, and, and, and so the, the family, my heart goes out, um, to you guys and, you know, to let you know that, you know, he will be best. And, you know, on a positive note that Sunday before he went to the hospital, John, he, and, and Joanne, he played the domino game of his life. Mm. Um, literally. And you, you would know, cause you were there. Yeah. Absolutely. He's on my team. Okay. I, I, I'm going to tell you why it's a domino game. We ha we haven't we did not win a game all season. Mm. The game is to 150. The score is 148, 147, and he's playing a game for two. So if he loses, our losing streak continues. He it took him nine minutes to play the shot, right, and nine minutes for the game to be done. Mm. He read out the game. Took him like three minutes to read out the game, and he read it out, read it out, read it out, read it out. He wins the game. So now we are up one forty nine, one fifty, and then the the one fiftieth game. Yeah, it was a good game, but it was an easier game than that game. So he literally played the game that in that gave us put us on a a, a winning um a winning field. So so you know he did good. So we 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 were very very um. Condolences to that whole family. Condolences and to the family. Um, um, hey, you asked the question. It, yeah. it just hopped off, but you can hit her up on her Facebook page. What is the question that you have, Ozzy? Maybe we, I can ask her, text her, and ask her, and mm -hmm. um, we could follow up. I can follow up and give you an answer if, if I if I'm able to get her. All right, but um, uh, so if you could ask, and then we could follow up with that. Um, so. We we're talking about what's going on in the world of world of 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 of, of politics and and what's going on out there. One of the one of the 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 other things that that we we didn't look at is about is about the fatalities, right? So there are a lot of um, um, there are a lot of things you know the, the guy sees. The guy sees his, I, I don't understand that, right? He, 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 on the Queen subway over there in, in Queens, right? On the subway over there in Queens, the 24-year-old guy, according to the news, saw the person that he had a beef with. He started fighting. The guy pulls out a gun and shoot him. So how how important was that beef that you need to go fight? You're 24 years now. Your life is gone because of a beef. So, a beef about nothing, too. Yes, it's here. Yeah, yeah. Huh? A beef a beef about nothing, also. Yeah, you lost your life over a beef. Yeah. Nowadays, people have no regards for people's lives at all. But it, 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 in in essence, though. You know, it's it's sad. I don't know the whole situation. I don't know the whole. No, and we will never know. But the, the fact know. of the matter is, at the end, you know, I I I I always tell somebody: pick your fight wisely. Pick your fight. Pick mm. your fight wisely, because he picked the fight according to what they said. Now I don't know how true that part is, right? But what they're saying is that he picked the fight, and the guy pulls out a gun and sh shoots him. People are not playing fair nowadays. There's but it's no not playing fair, though. It's 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 how important was that beef right now? It's not. He's dead, unfortunately. And now we just have to teach young people and just 
spread the word. Listen, it's not worth it. At the end of the day, walk away. If somebody offended you, if somebody said something that hurt your feeling, just walk away. Live to see another day. Right. You know, I, I'm you know, it's and well, you know what, but but you know, my my colleagues, it takes a lot of people, it takes a traumatic situation to happen for you to realize the errors of your ways. Mm. And when you're sitting in a jail cell, sentenced to either life or long term, you have a lot of things to to think about, and. The reason I'm going to mention that is this, and this is what we failed to do. We failed to stop. You know, we failed to stop, breathe, use our sense, use our spirit of discernment to determine whether or not the next decision that we make will have a profound impact upon our lives or the direction of our lives. Exactly. We, we never do that because we are constantly busy and doing other things. We need to prioritize what is important to us. Mm-hmm. And we Man. don't do that because we figure we have to be a part of something. That's but true. really, we, we, but really, you know what? That's something that we want to be a part of. That something is not something until we are actually committed to it Mm -hmm. and we need to practice patience we need to make sure we need to practice patience we need to be deliberate in our thinking because when we are reactive to a situation at that point in time our emotions take over our judgments are clouded and we do not make a rational decision because if you look at a lot of people who are sitting inside They say, if I can have that moment back, that one moment back, that one moment back, I could have made a different decision. John, um, um, we're going to bring on the next guest because he's going to talk about a way to help our young people, um, right? Our young people on ways to um, not to cook succumb to violence but have something to live for so let's bring on mm-hmm. tally akins um on um to on screen wait wait naftali how you doing sir i need to have an office before you introduce yourself i need to have an office like yours man what is all of those things behind you yo <laughs> yo my g i like that. That, means, that means you must be doing some work in the community yes you must be doing some work i like yeah. that i like yeah. that Yes. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, introducing to uh, a few people, introducing a few people to you and to others, they know you because looking back, there's something a lot of them see who you are. Um, we want to bring uh, Natalie Aiken on to the village show, uh, he's uh, from CCM. And uh, Natalie, just introduce yourself a little bit to our community, give us a little bit about your background, who you are, so they know. And then we want to jump right into the topic because, the, the, you know, the violence in our community, especially amongst young people, is killing us. And a lot of times we say that they're idle. And you, with, through your organization, you offer a lot of hope for a lot of young people. So let's talk a little bit about yourself. Um, Mr. Aiken, I work for Community Council Mediation, which is CCM. I've been working for the agency for over 20 years. We work with youth. Uh, I've been working with youth for well over 20 years. Um, I've been working from age kindergarten all the way to 24. Uh, we have after-school programs here. We also have um, summer youth employment program, and we have vulnerable youth program, and we have WLG programs for youth. So anything youth, I love to do. You know, it, it, it's, it, it, is, it is awesome. Um, give me, go ahead, Joe. <laughs> My son. How are you? And welcome to the show. Thank you. I am very familiar with CCM and you guys are located several different places. What are some of the locations where you guys are located? We have two locations, downtown Brooklyn. Our main office is located at Elm Place. Mm -hmm. We have mental health services. We have housing services as well. We have a couple of housing services throughout Brooklyn and we got a mental health in Manhattan as well. Uh, We have a new office that was located at Clinton Place. We also move uh, our youth services to East New York Avenue. 
Um, um, the, the main center for that would be, we used to be at 810 Classen. We actually moved now to our own location because some of you we're working with, it's too much to be at one location. We had to get our own location, which is good, uh -huh. which is 887B East New York Avenue. We've been here for approximately a year now. 887B East New York Avenue. All right. All right. So I know that um, you mentioned after school. What are some of the, where, what schools? So we have PS316, which is Elijah Strauss Middle, um, Elementary School. Mm -hmm. We have uh, BHS after school program, which is a middle school, which is downtown Brooklyn. We got MS915, which is also a middle school, which is downtown. We got PS238, which is close to Coney Island. And then we got um, MS915, which is Washington Heights. Okay, great. So now summer's coming up. Yes. And parents want to get their kids involved in summer youth or to get them out of the house, get right. them some skills. What should some parents do? I would suggest um, the applications are, are live now. They open. The deadline is, uh, I believe, May 6th, which is next Friday. I would say, suggest to everyone to apply online now. Um, that's the first step. And just wait for a phone call. Have all your documents ready and be prepared to get ready to work for the summer. The mayor gave us uh, a, a huge goal of almost 100,000 kids to be enrolled in some youth, the biggest, the largest ever in history. Wow. We are thankful for that. And we want to meet that goal. So we want every youth to work. Any with uh, could, you, could, 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 you re, could you repeat that again? <laughs> what part? The beginning with the mayor initiative? Yes. Repeat that again. So our, people our, mayor, our mayor uh, started a new initiative to enroll 100,000 youth in yeah. some youth employment program. That never happened before. That's true. And we, and we are thankful for the mayor. I appreciate the work he's putting in. And he's definitely put the work in, ground running, and he started something brand new. And we appreciate it. We're up to the challenge. Our goal is to get every kid enrolled and work for this summer, from age 14 to 24. How many kids? He are won 100,000. What uh, about CCM? How many? 2,000 ish, a little bit. Wow. To work, a little bit over 2,000. We're trying to enroll. <laughs> Roughly. 2,000 kids. Right. <laughs> we're working on it. Um, we have we 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 have a, a, over five hundred so far enrolled, but we still accept an application and enroll at the same time. One kids that still looking to get work with CCM is always working. okay. Yes, yeah. Oh wow! What are some of the jobs that the kids would be doing? I want to say jobs. So here at CCM, we don't call it. Jobs, we call it career. Okay. Career choice. And we want our youth to have career choice in what they want to be. So we, CCM have a website where once the kid is enrolled, they can look up the career choices they want. And based on the career choices, they can get a job in that field. We want the youth to get experience in working in their career choices so they can say, hey, I love working that career. I want to continue working that career. Oh, hey, this is not for me. I want to do something else. So then you have different opportunities. We have well over 400 Worksite placements throughout the four boroughs. We do not have anything in Staten Island. I apologize. It's, it's too far to commute. But we have Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, and Manhattan. Majority of sites are located in Brooklyn. So we try our best to gear them towards the career. Uh, and what we also do as well is we ask kids to complete a survey so we can know a little bit about them so we can really place them to a career choice. Mm. You know, um, Going back, and, and I heard about the 2000 um, piece that you have there, but I want to ask a question. Is it too late for students to apply? Nope. The deadline been extended. Um, mm -hmm. DYCD, Department of Youth Community Development, extended deadline to May 6th. That's uh, next week, Friday. Yes. So they still accepted applications, and they also <laughs> enrolled at the same time. Keep in mind, this is the first time this ever happened as well. Mm -hmm. So everyone's trying their best to meet the mayor um, requests, and we're all working really hard. And as you know, I'm still at work. So we're working at late night to get that numbers up. Um, and, 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 and how do, st what's the process? So students can apply through CCM for, um, for a position 
or for a career for a career exploration job. We're gonna look at it more like an internship into a right. field of, of, of interest, right? Right. Um so can does a student have to come to CCM to apply? What is there anything special that they have to do? Sure. Uh, to I, we have a CCM flyer that I believe I texted you already that you can um upload and, and share with the, the viewers. They have a special Andre, can you pull that up for us, please. Um you can pull that fly up, um, and they have a special pin for the 14 and 15 year old, and for the 16 and 24 is a um, as well. You, you apply it is a QR code. You put the information on, and you just put the when you complete the application, they ask you for a pin. You put CCM pin and apply for the program. How many kids were enrolled last year within CCM mm -hmm. or in general? Just just with CCM overall. We we enroll well over two thousand kids. I think it was twenty five, or no, twenty three ish. Some of you last year. Some of you. You also have wraparound services for a lot of these students who qualify, right. correct? Right. So we have the WLG program as well. Um, last year they enter the this, you this year the, was, use the initials. So oh, I'm yes. sorry. Yes. So the work long grow um program we work with them as well. So it's, which is wraparound where they start in. I believe October or November. And then once you enroll in some youth program, you have an opportunity to work in a program called Work, Learn, Grow program. They have environment core where you work with an environment piece or they have different WLG programs wrapped around with that as well. But in order to be qualified for the Work, Learn, Grow program, you have to participate in the Summer Youth Employment Program. Mm. And that's year long? That will be from, you start in November all the way to March. Okay. Roughly, February, March. What if you have students who are struggling? Is there any support for some of the kids who also want to work, but they might be struggling with their grades or whatever? How does that work? So the good thing about this program is not grade oriented. Mm -hmm. Is anybody who want to apply, who have the paperwork to apply, they could all get accepted. So you don't have to have good grades, bad grades, or have to be in school or out of school. Mm -hmm. This program right here with some youth employment program, you have to just apply. 14 to 24. Apply now. <laughs> <laughs> um, why is the um the application process? Because I actually just finished it in regards to uploading one by one. I as a mom scan everything. And put it in one wonderful package until you had to upload individually. So you had to rescan right. all over again. So um, that's, I think that's the, uh, there has to be an easier way for that. i am be honest, that is the easy way. In the past, yeah. right, in the past, what happened is parents would have to come to our location and submit all the documents. So then you have to wait online, take a ticket, put the information in, and have somebody look over your documents. This way online, I think because of COVID, um, they made everything so much easier that you can upload all your documents and review it here so you don't have to leave where you are. Okay. So before it was much harder. Now it's easier for most parents. So you don't have to come in, wait online, and bring all those documents in. And then if something's wrong and they say, oh, I'm sorry, this document is not acceptable, you don't have to come back again and spend money to come down. So it saves you time and money just to put it online. But some new parents, this is new to them. So the, what I would suggest in the future is um, call the sites, call the people up and say, hey, what's the process? What's the procedure? What do I do? How do I get myself ready? So this way they can tell you and give you the whole in, the rundown of what you need to do. So now if a student or a child get accepted, um, what is the time for them to submit all their paperwork? So if a student get accepted, you have three business days to submit all your documents. So you have three days to have all your documents submitted and then somebody have to review it and enroll it. If the person reviewed the documents, everything is great, you can get enrolled and then you have to do training before you start working. There's training called Hats and Ladders, which is an online-based training, self-guided training that DYCD created, which is a great program. And then you have to, every student, anybody I work with in the city have to do sexual harassment training, which we show you how to do that as well, which is online. And then you have a CCM orientation. So CCM orientation will give you the steps of everything in the program, how to do your timesheet, how to sign up for sexual harassment, how to do hassle ladders, what's the procedure, what the program look like before you start. 
And once you complete CCM orientation, then you can do your sexual harassment, it has ladders, and then you go to a CCM website where you pick your career choices. Um, it, it, is there a time frame in that? Yes, you get accepted. Yes, you put the code in. Um, is there a time frame in how that's done? So when it when when it when it when it when a, a young person gets accepted into um into the program, what's the time frame after those three days? What's the time frame? So once you get accepted, you should say so let's start off. Let me, let me backtrack. Once you put you submit your application, it is a lottery. It's a lottery that everyone has to go. The lottery will shoot every Tuesday. So once the lottery shoot, a parent will receive a phone call, a text. Um, an email, a robocall, and tell you that, hey, you have three business days to submit all your documents. Once you submit your document within those three days, you will get that participant enrolled in the program. Once a participant is enrolled in the program, he or she will receive an email or, or, or a link to follow up the next steps. And that email will come within 24 to 48 hours, depending on the weekend or not. Interesting. Very interesting. What are some of the success rates or prior um, some of you employees? I'm be honest. Within CCM, we have some youth that work with some youth program, and the older youth get jobs, get internships. Um, some people still work at the job they are now. So it depends where you work at. Um, we tend to tell, we we try to get our older youth to jobs that tend to hire, or the careers that tend to hire. Uh, which we give people to places that they want to be. So it's a good match. They they find something they love and they find employees that would give them opportunity to train them. We tell employers that you have an intern that you can work and groom for six weeks. And if you like this intern, you can keep this intern longevity, long term. So if it's a good match at work, if it's not a good match or they say, uh, if not, it's not a good fit, we ask the employer to give them a letter of recommendation. You know, I have a question for you, um, Naftali. Very, I don't believe in my children working. Really? Yes. I don't believe in them working during the summer. Why? I, there's, I, I feel like they need to spend their summer doing different things, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a twist to my point, right? There's a twist okay. to my point. There is a need because idle mind do idle things. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes, you know, we don't we don't do the right thing. So something like summer youth employment, how can we for a parent like me or a parent who haven't who haven't even thought about it? Why is something like summer youth so important that we need to get more children involved? I, uh, Dr. Bryant believes in some of you. She already did it for her children, right? So let's talk about that. Because it's very important because, you know, right prior to getting on, we we're talking about the 24-year-old who got shot in Queens. Mm. Right. I'm a, right? We're talking about um, two people got, I just, we just buried a 12-year-old um, last week. And right. in the car was a 20-year-old. And uh, we know that a lot of the violence are happening where, for the ages of, uh, on, under under twenty five, which is the, where, what you address. Why is this some of you so important? You know, and and my belief system has to be put out the window to a large extent. So for me, I have my youth. Um, I have a kid. Um, my son, he's now fourteen years old. Mm -hmm. I signed him up for some of you, not with CCM, with another provider, because I believe in the program and make a difference. I know youth that. I work with throughout orientation or throughout the program that now have an opportunity to start something and build something together. I have youth that came to some youth and now doctors. That's how long I've been here and come back and said, thank you for giving me the opportunity to even work and have opportunity. Some youth had opportunity to meet other youth that's like-minded and build up relationships and work together as a team. Um, they have an opportunity to grow and get responsibilities. I believe in the program because I feel like my son need to get out there and experience the world of what it is to be a part of the workforce and what are the steps to be in there and how do you handle yourself in certain situations. I'd rather him learn that now than later. 
And when you make a mistake, it's somebody there to support you and guide you versus you start at 18, 19, and you make a mistake and you're getting a write-up or you get terminated. Yes, you know, you know, I love the fact that you talk about it's not a job, it's a career. Because a lot of our young people, they want to do different things jobs right they, they want to be involved in law they want to be involved in medicine they want to be involved in construction and, and the likes but yet still they have no idea what that is like and whether or not exactly. what, what they want to do right is really what they think they want to do because they sometimes don't really know what the job is like right yes. and so offering a career opportunities i think is so valuable and again, to be honest with you i kind of wish i'd thought about because i know you and i have done some work right um in the past, and I really didn't think about it um, when my when my children were fourteen, um, you know, fourteen, fifteen. I mean, seven, eight years ago um, when that happened. And I, I think, in some ways, you know, I have to go back and revisit that conversation that I just had. Right now, with the fourteen and fifteen year old, they don't actually work at the work site. It's like a job training. It's almost like a how to do and what to do when you get to the work. It's like a preparation before you even start working. And there's mm -hmm. online courses that we work with the 14 and 15 year old before they even start. And they have different um, different roads they can go. We have some stuff that's online and you work with different agencies that build them up and career choices and work with that. We really believe that our youth need to have the opportunity to experience work force programs and learn about it early and develop themselves. So when they get there, they know exactly how to hand themselves with certain predicaments. Absolutely. How to control your anger. How to control your feelings, the emotion. You can't bring the streets to work. And uh, somehow you oh can, my God. Because they That's don't know so the difference. Important. It's so important. And they don't understand the difference. So, and the, the way you talk to your friends, you can't talk to your supervisor that way. So we mm -hmm. take the time when it like certain youth, and I'm I'm it's not perfect. I mean, we have all types of youth, but when the youth that get terminated, they come back to us and we say, This is what you did wrong. Hear how you can improve yourself. What do you see yourself going from here? And what can you do differently? So when we talk to them, we actually guide them to the next job and give them another opportunity to work. So we're not trying to fail any youth. We want every youth like, to succeed in this world. And my goal is no kid left behind. So any kid that come in the program, they are my children, I consider. They are my children, and I'm working to give them the same thing I would give that youth, I would give my own son. Absolutely. I treat you the same way I would treat my own son. If you do something wrong, I'm calling your mother. I'm talking to your father. And we all can get together to work this out. I love it. I love it. I, that's me. That's how I show my love. Absolutely. So you, we have one of our um, viewers who wrote, can an artistic student use this program? If my child is turning 14 in June, can they apply? Yes. We work with District 35 youth as well. So District 35 youth also work SYP. Mm -hmm. And they have schools that work with District 35 youth that um, have, they, they actually have a certain slots for District, District 75 youth. So if you have a youth that's 14, I would suggest you speak to um, the principal or the job coach person that, in that school. He or she should know about some youth employment program and they can work with that youth as well. Because those youth work within the school and give them an opportunity as well. The second part of the question, turning 14 in June, when is the, wh how old, when do you turn 14 to apply? If you turn it 14 in June, you can apply now. Okay. Well, so what's the cutoff date? Do you know what the cutoff date is? I believe the cutoff date is July 1st. Okay. So as of July 1st. Right. Okay. Um, you wanted to, what got you into yeah. this? What, what got you into this? Mm. What got me into some of you uh, working with youth? To yeah, be honest, your journey and things you overcame to get here. Uh, to be honest, I think it was my, that's a good question. I think it was my opportunity to work with AmeriCorps. So I was working with CCM AmeriCorps as a volunteer. So I started at CCM as a volunteer. I was going to school. I was volunteering at AmeriCorps and I was trying to get a scholarship. That was the, my end goal to go somewhere else. And when I got to the job and I started working, I was one of those troubled youth. And I used to bring the streets to work. And my supervisor sat down with me and gave me a chance and groom me and work with me as a summer youth, I mean, as a AmeriCorps um, participant. And when I, when I was there, I fell in love and I couldn't leave. And I said to myself, if I can work with youth all day, I stay young. Mm -hmm. They keep you young. <laughs> I said, you, you, keep you, young. you know the trends, you know how to speak the language, and they keep you young because you, you're making a difference. If somebody don't have a father in life, you can mentor them, you can work with them, you can give them an opportunity and tell them like, hey, you're not a failure, you can make some of your life. 
I want to see if I can reach every kid. And when they come back to me, I, I feel good. To me, that's more rewarding than working in finance and making all this type of money that I could have made. I'm, I get rewarded by you succeeding in this world. To me, it's like, it's like a, I'm building a, a, a garden and every person that grow and grow, they can help somebody else. Absolutely. Paying it forward. Absolutely. I, I, have, as well. I have one last question. So I remember I was not a part of summer youth when I was growing up. Uh, I went through the co-op. Aspect. They robbed me. They robbed me. Some of you, I'm telling you, they robbed me, man. I, Dr. Lelosh, I'm going to call him by name. He robbed me. Oh, my goodness. So <laughs> 30 I, years ago, and I am still remember that. I'm going to tell you that story. Get over, over it. it. No. <laughs> he robbed so me. I actually um, did not go through some of you. I went through co-op. So it's a total different experience where I actually worked one week and went to school another week. But what I experienced my first year working there or right away was racism mm -hmm. and um, being the only black working in a bank um, in the division I was in was definitely something that was shocking. So what are some of the areas where the kids will be working? I'm not saying that they're going to experience racism or anything. They could face anything. Um, discrimination or whatever, but what are some of the organization or are, you know, I'm thinking, hey, some of you, is it only after school? Is it only summer camp? Where no. are some of the places? So we have all type of industries. We have, um, off the top of my head, we have finance. We have health healthcare. Um, there's so many things. Like we, got, we have NYPD we working with as well. And we have a lot of sites with them as well. We have DHS sites. We have ACS sites, uh, uh, governance sites, I would say. We have some MTA sites. We we have finance. Uh, it's, so, it's, it's hard to track because over 400. Um, we have things in Chef, working at restaurants, working at mom and pop shops, um, mm -hmm. even um, certain dojos, um, dance studios. Oh my gosh! So I many don't forget you have schools. Don't forget some kids get, who. Yeah, we got schools as well within the schools. Uh, we do got after school programs as well, um, but we try our best not to have too many after school programs because not too many youth want to work with youth, to be honest. But we have them there, so we have a plethora of, of sites. Uh, let me see. But me. thank you because you know um, definitely wanted to know where would some of the you know kids be exposed to? And the fact that you mentioned some of the different avenues and um, I would never think MTA um, or, you know, so this is- We have CVS, we have Walgreens as well. Okay. Uh, we have things, and Walgreens and CVS uh, high a lot, to be honest, those are one of the big ones. We have retails like Express. We have, um, we have a realty company for real estate. Okay. Uh, I said the precincts, uh, realty company. We have collision place like body works, like people want to work on cars. Okay. But I love the fact that it goes all the way up to 24 too. Yes. This so, year um, it's 24. Yes. If, 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 if you have a business and you want to get some student, some young people to work there, how do we, is that feasible? Is that, is that yes. a practice? It's still feasible. We still re recruiting for new work sites. If you want to become a work site, all you got to do is give us a call. Um, we would definitely work with you. We would send a site monitor to your location. We evaluate the sites to make sure it's safe. We ask you to, we give you an orientation. We give you all the information you need on how to be a work site. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, perfect. So, uh, how do people get in touch with CCM? Um, I can honestly would say the best way to contact me would be either give me a call. Uh, my number is 929 Two zero two seven eight one one. That'll be the best way. You can ask for Mr. Aiken. Um, they will transfer you over, and I will set you up with the right parties. If you're still interested in applying with some of you for program, you can contact me again, and I will gladly work with you as well. Um, can you state that number again? Two. I mean nine two nine two zero two seven eight one one. That's the main location number. Okay. And is there an email? Uh, my email is n. A I K E N 
at ccmnyc.org. And, and just to remind everyone, you have until next week, Friday. I believe yes. that's next week, Friday, May 6th, to apply. And it's a lot of system. And if your child has a, has special needs uh, or you have children in foster homes, right, the homeless children as well, they actually move to a different application. You need to state that. So contact um, Natalie Aiken at um, ccnnyc.org. or give CCM, them a call. CCM as in Mary. Yes, CCM. I, I was actually with CCM. CCM. Mm -hmm. um, I should pull out my sweater upstairs with CCM on it um, <laughs> um, to show and, and to get involved. So you can get involved either as a business, as a young person, um, or just want to get additional services because they do a lot of wraparound service. And thank you, Naftali, for joining us today. And well, thank you. Thank you. Um. So and you know what? They pay them well too. So that's yeah. the thing. They, they pay get, them. I, 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 that was a question that we forgot to ask. You know, yeah. let's let's immediately bring our next guests on. Um, yes. uh, you, know, the, you know, I I'm mad at one of the guests, but I'm I'm not gonna tell Chuana that I'm mad at her. Good evening, ladies. How are you? Right. I'm I'm not even gonna tell her I'm mad at her. Forget about Mona. I'm I'm, I'm even triple mad at Mona. Um, He's always okay. mad at somebody, so don't pay it any mind. Uh, keep talking. I'm gonna be. You, I'm, welcome, gonna, I'm, gonna be I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be quadruple. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you for joining. Well, welcome, us. ladies. Awesome as usual. Thank you again for coming back to the village. Mona, you're muted. Just so you know. <laughs> right. Thanks for having us. Right. Uh, you know this is awesome. Um, you know, first and foremost. I, I, I don't know. There's so many young people violence that are happening within our community. And then again, I'm I'm still I was I was having a conversation over the weekend. I was I was speaking at a function and one of the one of the panelists uh, is um, is an SSA. Mm -hmm. And and um, I was just I was telling them about you guys and. You know, we were just talking about how important the work is that you're doing in schools. And 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 people, I see you, I see Urban Youth Collaborative keep talking about removing you from school, removing you from school. And it's a crack of, I don't want to use the S word, but it's a crack of baloney. You're not police officers. Yes, you're under the umbrella of police officers. You're not police officers. You don't carry a gun. And you are the first line of defense for young people in our schools. So, uh, you know, I don't, whichever one of you want to respond, um, you know, I'm, I'm throwing you in there immediately before you even get it. And while you're doing it, just introduce yourself as well. I know, so rude. I'll let Mona go first. Go, Mona. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you to uh, Roderick and Dr. Brian. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Sampson and uh, the entire village team for having us on again. It is an honor to be here. Um, you know, I was listening to the conversation earlier. I learned a lot uh, listening to the young lady. Um, and now I'm also very interested in hearing more about um, this, you know, the summer youth uh, employment opportunities. So, um, you know, every time I listen in, there's always so much going on and so much information being shared. So I just want to say thank you for doing what you're doing and bringing all of this information to the village. Thank and you. it's a pleasure to be back on again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Joanna? I share the same sentiment. Glad to be back. I haven't seen you guys in a while. It's been a lot <laughs> happening since I've last seen you guys. Oh, and um, I'm just happy that you got, you guys are true partners and you know true champions of speaking the truth. And no matter you know how hard some time it is to speak the truth, because everybody doesn't want to hear it, but you know it is what it is. And we've gotten to this place, just here to have a discussion because we are in a dire situation. Yeah, we're, we're we're gonna start off with a comment on the screen. Mr. Gentile is a former principal, right? And, um, and and both of you are gonna attack this co this comment right away. I love my SSAs. Um, they really diffuse so many situations. 
Okay. SSAs are trained actually in restorative practices and de-escalation method. That a lot of people think like, oh no, they're gonna hype up situation. No, they're trained to de-escalate. So both of you can attack because I, I agree full hundred with with Mr. Gentile in this comment. And also I want to add on to the fact I have to commend SSAs all the way because they're the first ones that is at you know when there is an attack mode. They're the first one that you see walking into a school building. Look at the incident that just took place um, less than two weeks ago, two to three weeks ago, with the school safety agent who got stabbed. So, um, so thank you for always being the first one up front that when people walk through the doors, it's you all that they see. You know, when they're angry, unfortunately, it's you all that have to deal with the craziness, but um, people don't understand um, the significance, the importance, and any incident, um, health incidents, you all, anything in the streets, you all. So you are the main people. Principles are very important, but safety-wise, we commend you. Thank you. Thank you. Mona, I'll let you go first, and then I'll just, I'll go after, because... This is um freaking frack. Go ahead, frick. frack <laughs> uh, I thought we were TNT. Oh, TNT. boom! Dynamite. Um, you know, so I was saying that I was listening earlier, and um, I think it was Roderick that brought up um the the fight, the incident that happened, and um, you know, yes. Yes, yesterday, and you know, someone's, a, you know, a young person's life is destroyed over what a beef, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I think you said what, what, what? How old was how old was he? Twenty four. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Twenty twenty four. Right. So, you know, listening to you um, having that conversation today, I'll give you an example. Um, I got the call that at a high school in Queens, I have it somewhere in my notes, a 14 year old um, came into the school with a loaded 22. Mm. Okay, and it's, an, it, it's a non-scanning school. Uh, Quayam probably remembers the name of the school, but it's a non-scanning school, 14 years old. And the, you know, how the administration and the school safety agents knew about it was because he told the other students who he was coming back to fight and shoot that he's coming back with his gun to fight them and shoot them. And that was today. In and don't forget Tottenham Villa as well. A couple of weeks ago, we saw that it at, that was a scan school with a gun dropped out. Of, it wasn't a scan school that we got dropped out of. The, the, out of the, yeah. Charles so, Bell. you know, um, we had we had a press conference, um, I think it was April 11th, um, after the young lady, Angela Yumbo, was um, shot and killed outside of a school in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And then um, outside of that press conference, um, I always come with my visuals. Roderick, you know from back in the days, we always have our visuals when we have press conferences. Yes. So here's my visual. So I came with my visual, got my visual here. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is at the press conference on Monday, okay? April 11th. April 11th, a year ago, only one gun had been found in a school, okay? Fast forward to a year later, we have 17 guns as of April 11th. Now I have to update because now we're going to have 18 guns as of today. So, mm. you know, again, with my, with, with, with my visuals from my early organizing days, the facts and the stats. And when you look at the facts and the stats, like we are in crisis, you know, guns, weapons, tasers, knives, machetes. I mean, the percentages have increased in the hundreds of percents mm -hmm. since either last year or pre-pandemic. So we, we have a crisis and mm -hmm. You know, I know UIC. I remember UIC when UIC first got, got started. I know the history of what I call the alphabet left nonprofits, because that's, it's the alphabet. You name it, UIC, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's all alphabet. 
And um, I have to say that, like, I'm really disappointed because they keep on saying and misleading. And these are young people. So as a mother of a 24 year old uh, young lady, thank goodness she's done, you know, uh, with, with all of her schooling but also the mother of an incoming 14 year old that attends school in the Bronx. You know what? I don't wanna attack other people's children, but what I don't understand is why these young people or the people who are behind, the adults behind these young people keep on saying that school safety agents are police in the schools when they know full well that they are not because that remember, lie, like why continue to lie about something that is black and white like mona remember one thing when what you want to do is give the perception of a truth and so if like remember they're still going on blm and black life matter and police this and policing and so you want to fabricate something to make it seem so real while at the same time, a lot of places where SSAs are needed is, and they're trying to get rid of them in the East. Like John likes to talk about the 13 assembly districts where you have the bulk of the crimes that are happening. And I would, I would venture to say that in these same assembly districts are also the schools where these crimes are happening, mm -hmm. right? But yet still, you want to get rid of SSAs in these schools, the East New York the Brownsville, the heart of Queens, the Hollis, the, 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 the areas in the Bronx, South Bronx, right? Mm -hmm. Where these crimes mm -hmm. are happening, you want to get rid of safety agents. So you can, so a 14 year old come back to school and shoot up the school, where a kid in Tottenville can bring a gun that dropped out of his bag. Are you, I mean, where a kid gets stabbed, you have a 14 year old and 16 year old got stabbed, I think earlier this week or last week, I don't remember the, 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 the date. Right, but these, you know, where we spoke about the kid getting flattened outside of a high school. If it wasn't for the SSAs, you know, the situation would not have have have, have been quite. His life wouldn't have been saved. But yet, still, you you give this false narrative. And that and that's exactly what it is. This false narrative, this propaganda. Uh, but then also, again, as a mother, as a black woman, what also hurts me is that the people that they are attacking, the alphabet left, are black women who, who look like me, who are my neighbors, who are mothers, who are grandmothers. I mean, 70% of SSAs are black and Hispanic women so, with children in those same schools. So, you know, it's really, it's, it's really unfortunate that um, they're still pushing, they're still having rallies um, and they're still pushing the lies, the misinformation, and the propaganda. And as what, what did Donald Trump say? Fake news. The fake news. And as as a mother, I'm scared of my son going into high school this uh, this September because I know what's going on. I see the statistics. Um, and believe me, when I tell you, no school is safe. It doesn't matter what borough you live in. Yes. What neighborhood you live in, you yes. can live in Regal, Regal Park, Kew Gardens. Listen, they're having wild, wild west shootouts outside of schools. Right. So people need to understand that no child is safe and our school safety agents are there to protect our children. And they they seizing these loaded firearms, these guns with no bulletproof vest. So, you know, as long as I can continue to stand with my fellow mothers and grandmothers, our school safety agents, I will, because wrong is wrong and they're the ones that are keeping our kids safe in the school. And what matters to me is my child's safety and everyone else's child's safety. Absolutely. You know, what was, um, I was having a conversation with the elementary student today and they mentioned, you know, I, you know, I have a taser and I'm saying to myself, why do you need a taser? And you're only in third grade. And they're like, yeah, you know, I have a taser and I have a um, pepper spray. And I'm like, oh, God. If, if you're having that in third grade, what are you going to have in fourth grade? So it is alarming to me. Like, uh, this is elementary. And they're not scanned. 
I, so, I, you wanna, I, I wanna go to you for a second, right? I see Mona holding up a post. 591%. Bad. You see the stats and facts? That, that, so that is, we're looking at a third grader having a taser. Guess what? There's a whole bunch of other students also in elementary school who have tasers. Taser seizures in schools have soared, jumping by a whopping 591%. Wow. I, 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 you know, addressing Dr. Brian's question, um, Joanna, um, SSA Simpkins, I, I want... A lot of times, like people fail to realize that some, a lot of these, when you talk about a third grader with a with a taser, with a pepper spray, that comes from the parents. Mm -hmm. What are some encounters that you have had as an SSA dealing with parents that you have to look about? You know, what are your thoughts on that comment that I just made? Because it, it it it's real. I, I've seen parents come up to fight and actually start the fight and mm -hmm. say, "You beat my child. I'm gonna be. You tell the child I'm gonna beat you, or you're gonna have to beat this child back." And you have fighting. <laughs> oh God, let me let me go because okay. So Andre has sent me a list of questions that you know I was prepared to answer the questions, but I think that you know what this is the village. We're all in the village. We need to have a candid conversation. Conversation. <laughs> so I'm going to bring all the realness tonight because at this point I'm over it. So let's talk about what's really going on in the school. We have a lot of angry children, a lot of volatile parents. A lot of angry people in the community and, and the violence and crime in the street has now come into the building and it is out of control. Kids are bringing tasers, but they're getting the tasers from the adults in mm -hmm. their lives who are giving it to them. I'm not knowing if the fact if they want them to harm someone or if they're giving it to them for their own protection. Because let's be realistic. A lot of our city's youths are misguided. They're not being parented properly. These kids are raising themselves. I see it every single day. The older sibling is the parent. They're bringing the little ones. They all doing whatever. The parents like, take it, go have at it, whatever. We're finding knives. We're finding razors. We're finding tasers. We're finding bats. We're finding brass knuckles. We're finding 18 handguns, fully operable handguns, in the hands of young people inside of the school. And it's crazy because me and myself and Mona and other people in the coalition have been telling people that this was going to happen. But you have the far left, far left, who's nonsensical people, they don't have common sense. You know, they, they're chanting and yelling on the bandwagon of police-free schools, and this is what we've gotten to, not realizing that there are no police in school. It's only school safety agents. You know, racist policing. What racist policing? The majority of us are minority, and the majority of us are females. Literally, we are the mothers and the aunts and the grandmothers and the fathers of these children. So mm -hmm. these like she said, the ABC groups have exploited these vulnerable young people. Because I'm going to tell you what's really going on in the DOE. Bullying is real. Trust me when I tell you. They try to downplay it. They try to act like it doesn't exist. But it does exist. Kids are getting bullied. Kids are getting picked on. They're telling people and it's falling on deaf ears. They're not following up on it. They're not contacting parents. Paperwork is not being done. It's not going online on ORGS, which is the online reporting system for the DOE. No one's following up. These kids feel like they have no other recourse. They do what they do, carrying weapons for whatever purpose they feel they want to protect themselves. But this is what's happening. Not only do you have the child who's violent and angry, you got parents who are violent and angry coming in the building to attack staff coming in the building to attack administrators, coming into the building attacking other people's children, coming into the building attacking school safety because school safety is jumping in to protect the school community, doing what we do, which is within our rights. And now we are getting assaulted mm -hmm. at an alarming rate. That is and true. No one seems to care. Okay, you know, there's some few stories that made the news. There was one agent who got jumped by parents and then it was, a, you know, the other agent who got stabbed in his neck so close in proximity to his carotid artery, a few centimeters over, it would have been over for him. But no one mm -hmm. seems to care. But they're not the only two. There's hundreds of school safety agents who are getting assaulted. No one's rallying. No one's out crying. No one's caring that it's happening. No one's caring that these parents have completely lost it. And the violence in the street is now in the building. And we've been saying that this was going to happen. And no one listened. You know, and I'm going to call out people's names because I don't care about these people. Because at this point, you don't seem to care about what's happening in the community. You say you're for the community, but you don't show up in the community. And people, certain people pick certain instances of where they want to show up. Because this is my thing. 
listen, the young man in my neighborhood, in my area, killed in a car, eating his food. I did it with my kids plenty of times. You have politicians run into this, this scene. They want to be in the photo op. They, they, they want to be there for the glitz and the glamour. Okay, I get it. I'm a parent. My heart is broken. I, that devastated me. But then you have instances where there's full-on shootouts between 15 and 14-year-old kids in the street. Mm -hmm. And this three kids shot down outside of a school. Mm -hmm. And this, no one came. No one rallied. No one protested because these are young people killing other young people. There was no photo op. There was no opportunity. And I'm telling people, these nonsensical laws that they have put in place that's impacting our communities is mm -hmm. impacting our communities. And people don't realize it. You mm -hmm. believe that it's doing you great because, oh, my son, he went, he got right out. It's great. But no, he's being set up because he's constantly doing something. And all after a while, when he becomes an adult, all those things are going to fall on him. They're baiting him. This is why they're building more jails and it's in private instead of more schools. And this is what has gotten to me to the point where someone has to say something and no one's saying absolutely nothing. They're mum and they're quiet. No one supports school safety because this false narrative after the George Floyd situation when these groups saw their opportunity to jump on it, so they're running with it, they're over-abusing it. There's no police in the school. Say it one more time. And I'm going to burst everyone's bubble. And this is going to go for Jemani Williams, UYC, all these Chi OCs and all these other council people who are delusional and I don't know where you live. We need to start checking some of the addresses of some of these people. Because if you work in a community and you, you're in the city council for that community, what's your address? Because your constituents are being, you know, tra traumatized and, you know, these things are happening. But where are you when it's happening? Because this is the serious situation that has gotten to me to the point where I'm livid. And I've, I've had enough of this insanity. School safety are not police. We are school safety agents. Yes, we are NYPD department personnel. But do you know why we're NYPD department personnel? Because of the 1998 MOU, which was signed between the Department of Education, the then BOE, the mayor at the time, which was Giuliani, and the NYPD. There was a mutual understanding. And if people don't know what a contract is, or once you do something like that, here's the bubble. We always belong to the Department of Education. They pay our salary. We get paid by them. They've always had school security. But the problem was the governance changed because the DOE, DSS, back then was the Department of School Security, they, they couldn't properly manage the schools. The schools were out of control. Because how can you expect educators to be in control of physical safety? So what happened was they had an MOU, a memorandum of understanding that the NYPD will come in. They will hire, train, and supervise school safety agents. Every time there's a transfer of power from one mayor to the next, that mayor has the right to either rescind that MOU or to keep it going. So once Giuliani left office, Bloomberg came in, he kept it going. Smart man, because he didn't want the school to crumble down. He didn't want the violence to out, go out of control. He didn't want the blood on his hand. And see, with the NYPD training inside of school safety, it keeps the police out of the school. Exactly what they wanted. Because we have that training to be able to handle the school, do effectively what we need to do. Yes, we have arresting powers, but they're not for the children. They're for the outside negative forces that come in to negatively impact upon the educational process. But the lies are being told. So at the end of the day, all these UYC people and all these other people, these groups who are going to have all these healing center schools. Listen, school safety is not opposed to having guidance counselors and social workers because they're needed. Emotional mm -hmm. support, social mm -hmm. support. But we also give emotional and social support. We are the grand masters of restorative justice. We are the grand masters of peer mediation, mediation, conflict resolution. We can teach it to the DOE staff because they are inadequate at performing that. But you will never get rid of school safety because at the end of the day, if we're no longer under NYPD, we'll go back to being under the Department of Education and that would be a disaster. I, I wanna go to Mona for a minute. You have a newspaper, um, Little Africa. What is that about? You're muted. <laughs> Sorry. So Little African News um, is an expansion of our website. We are the only um, African 
uh, print newspaper, not just in New York City, but in the nation right now. A lot of newspapers shut down, so it's just us. But we cover the diaspora. So we cover what's happening local, our local news, what's happening in our communities. Um, we cover national news, regional news, and international news. So when I say we cover like local news and we're talking about school safety, um, one of the things that we did with our current issue is, um, and I'm just showing this current issue, but we have the school safety agent who was stabbed in the neck on mm. the front cover because he's a hero and he almost died. Um, and we've covered stories about you know, what's going on um, with school safety. We cover stories about what's going on in um, the Caribbean. We interview different consul generals, like we interviewed the consul general for Barbados, uh, Mr. Mackey Holder, when Barbados, you know, now became a republic. So we cover news that's about the diaspora. Mm -hmm. So whether it's what's going on in uh, Jamaica with the Rwandan president visiting Jamaica, that's in the next issue. But we want to we want to bring the good news of what's going on in our communities. But we also want to educate and inform our communities about some of the stuff that we need to fix and what's a priority. And school safety is clearly one of those. And you know, I know that when I get like tomorrow, I'll be reaching out um, to the gentleman from the summer youth program because I want to do a story on that, you know, in an upcoming issue, because that's the kind of things that we want to highlight. And Roderick, I'm putting in my request now, we do community leader profiles. So I'm putting in my request now, Mr. Roderick, for an interview <laughs> in our paper. Okay. So don't say I put in my request and you'll, if you don't see it in the May 16th edition, that means Roderick ghosted me. Let wow. me ask you, how can we actually get a copy of Little Africa? So we are distributed in over 300 locations um, mm -hmm. in New York City. We're distributed by NDA, which is one of the largest distribution companies. And then we also do specific target drop-offs, um, you know, at certain restaurants and things like that. But like you'll find us in um, where you'll find the post or the times because not all stores carry newspapers anymore, as right. you know. But you'll find us there because we're distributed by the same uh, company that does it. Also, if you subscribe to our newsletter, um, you know you can get the digital version, which is online. And um, very soon, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to put up the information for the subscription ver version, where if people want to subscribe and have it mailed to them. But um, I will also post the, um, the places where people can go and uh, pick up a copy. But if you, look, you, you should find it somewhere you know, in your neighborhood, or if you just give me your zip code, I can tell you where in your neighborhood, which stores are carrying it. Roderick, I want to say something real quick, um, and I'm going to do real quick. So um, people need to support school safety because we are depleted. We don't have the numbers. We don't have enough agents. We need that to is true. Out. Speak up for us because we are dying out here literally covering. I, I was just a about to, a bullet wound with a band aid. Now they have opened up slots and there's money allocated to hire more agents, but the starting salary is so low that a lot of people just don't want it. They don't want the headache because what's happening in the schools are, is atrocious. So no one wants to take on that fight. So we're going to have to push the advocacy. If you get any money, right? Listen, school safety is hiring. Let them know we need people. We need bodies. We really need it because at this point, the system is sinking. We need support. It, like life support. We need life support. And Mr. Pierre Wyatt, you asked, what are we doing as a community to change the behavior of our children in our community? What are we doing wrong with the people? Let me tell you what we're doing wrong with the people because this is the village and we're all the people. All right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no more village. Everybody is a single solitary person is, living true. within the village. What happened to the days when everybody I mean, knew your neighbor, you came out and talked to your neighbor, not to fight them, not to beat them up, not, not to be begrudgeful, and mm -hmm. the attitude of not me, not my baby, that has to stop. Because back then, mm -hmm. I remember I did something before I got to my door. My right. grandmother knew what happened because the neighbor called, to me. before I got there, I already got checked up mm -hmm. by the neighbor. Mm -hmm. But here's my thing. We lost that sense of yes. community. 
parents don't check up on what their kids are doing no more. They don't see what they're doing. They shut them up, throw them a MacBook, give them a phone, go over there in the corner. They don't know what's happening. They're not checking and see what's happening inside these rooms. You don't know what your kid is watching, what they're doing, who they're talking to. You don't care who their friends are anymore. You don't care to meet the friends. I'm going to my friends. Well, who's the friends? They don't even know. The kids are just roaming the streets. Why is your young person under the age of 18 outside at one o'clock in the morning? What is going on here? If, don't even say one o'clock. Why are they outside after after eight nine o'clock by themselves? I have Parents a, need to I, take control, accountability, and responsibility. Yep, they're not, if, they're not, if, if they're not coming from people calling ACS when there's a situation with the kid, the Administration for Children's Services, they need an APS, Administration for Parental Services, because <laughs> parents need help. I'm serious. Ooh, well, why well, they produce them true. from the home and the, and the parents just like don't care. I'm not trying to say it's all parents, because a lot of parents try the best they can, and kids can do what they want. But I'm saying the majority of what I've seen, a lot of these kids got all the say-so and control. Because guess what? Mama got to have a life, too. They are somewhere God knows where. I had a young man tell us, a guidance counselor, I'm, she said, I'm going to call your mother. And he said, well, when you find her, tell her we're looking for her, too. Yep. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 I could give stories as, a, as an administrator. You, you mentioned school safety and that, and that they, they are... They are hiring, right? So I want to go back. What is the starting salary? And what is the, what 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 are the um, the qualification? And Mona, when we get off the air, you can call me tomorrow. We can set up the interview. All right, and Andre said it's time to wrap up. So let me do this. Yes, let me, it let me, is. Let me speak to it. Yes. 30, a little over thirty-two thousand starting salary after seven years is fifty thousand two hundred and seven. You need a high school diploma. You need to be a citizen. You need to be in good standing. And you need to be a citizen to start, or you need to work towards your citizenship. You should be a citizen when you start. Okay. When you, do, when you start the application, you start the process. Okay. You must be a New York City, a New York, a New York City resident, or the surrounding counties also. Okay. And it started thirty-two fifty at the how was it was five years to fifty. Yeah. No seven. Seven That's, years. We're trying That's to beat. We're trying to beat that back, y'all. We need help. Let's go. Yeah, you have my support on that, and you know whatever That's I can do hard. to help you. The other thing. Um, yeah, you know, that people don't understand. There's a lot of overtime. It's a lot of OT if you want it, right? If you want the OT, what is it like? Uh, you got a, a eighty hour, eighty uh, hour tab. Depending if you go over, they have to write to say that you um certified. But here's my thing: you shouldn't have to depend on overtime to be able to sustain your life. I, no, you I agree. With the way the minority majority woman workforce. It looks a little sexist and a little, you know, because why are we getting the low end of the totem pole? Every other job I, 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 let, me just tell you, let me just tell you uh, the reason why I didn't become a police officer many years ago. There was a they did the contract, I think, in 2002, where it was a $34,000 starting salary. I'm like, I'm not doing I that. remember that, yeah. So I said, I'm not doing that. Um, Moni, the newspaper is awesome, uh, SSA is awesome. You, you got the work that you guys are doing. Um, the one thing I wanted to ask, and I know that we don't really have the time, and I know Andre is like. Yeah. How can we get to the newsletter? How can we register for the newsletter? Where do we go? What website? Please share with us. Otherwise, you're going to have to come back and share again. We don't mind coming back. Go ahead, Mona. Always we, welcome. No, we'll definitely come back, but the website is littleafricanews.com. And you can sign up for the newsletter, and you can also read our previous editions. We will do that. Thank I you. That. Yes, uh, littleafricanews.com. Yes. Go to NYPD careers to look up the school safety requirements. Ladies, you have to come back. You have to come back to share. We will continue this conversation. It will not end here. And we have to make a noise for our school safety agent. You so, guys are... You, absolutely. I, the one thing I want to add to what Dr. Bryant is saying is that people talk about getting more social workers, more guidance counselors in the schools. Mm -hmm. They are... The guidance counselors, social workers are so... Important. imperative so mm -hmm. important you talk about mental health and deal with students but the reality of the situation is that our ssas are the first line of the defense. defense yep right that is it. And, and, and and a lot of times the young people open up to school safety yes. before they yeah. open up to anybody else they yeah. let them know what is happening in our community in our society for this to happen so the work that you're doing, Mona, as a parent, the work that you're doing, Tuana, as a yes. as an SSA, that both of those works are so vital and so important. And so we thank you so much yes. for joining the village. And I know that you guys will be in touch with Andre 
um, to ensure that you get back on the village. Maybe Absolutely. next month we'll work on it and, and get you on for next month. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank Village you for having and, me. And, and, and tell us. hubby stop bothering you, Kiwana, while you're on the air, right? Tell hubby stop bothering you, <laughs> right? <laughs> we appreciate you all for joining with us this week. We thank you, and we will have the ladies back to speak yes, about will. the safety of everyone. And if a woman comes back next month and she and you don't see the interview by Rod Daly, you know that uh, he ghosted me. The, he, okay. I ghosted her. Can't, can't do that, Roderick. No, you yeah, gotta I'm, go. I'm, 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 yes, most definitely not. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining us on The Village, where we're dedicated to empower the community thank you. to live a healthy, safe, and financially capable life through education, helping each one of us in realizing our dreams at any age, any point, started from today. Success. Yeah. It's not just spoken, it is done. Happy Ramadan to all of our listeners out there. I know Monday is the final day and a big celebration. And there's no school on Monday in New York City, ladies and gentlemen. Hallelujah. So you stay God, God bless and enjoy. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Bye-bye, everyone. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night.